Welcome to the Retrospect Podcast, a show where people come together from different walks of life and discuss a topic from their generation's perspective. My name is Ian, and as always, I'm joined by Stoney. Hello. Even though I feel a li- uh, or I sound a little under the weather, I, f- I feel a lot better than I probably have. Usually, you know, with the stroke lately and the, the surgery and everything, I'm usually the one bringing the news in. Hey. But this time, oh, man. I get to go, hey, what's new with you, Ian? Oh, there's so much. Um, What's the biggest thing? So let's let's at least just start off, I guess, from mostly the beginning. the The vacation went well, right? Um, as you guys can imagine, the the hot Florida sun for a couple of days was not wanting to relent, and it was, uh, I want to say, ninety eight degrees Fahrenheit one one of the days, and it said it felt like one hundred and seven, and I was like, "Yeah, sounds about right. Sounds right. about right." My uh, my uh, sweating face agrees, um, but other than that, like a uh, majority of the days we were there we had like some afternoon showers that were like kind of light wasn't that big of a deal and some wind so like the weather was super nice like for most of the days um now you see you put one word in there that i'm really curious about uh oh me oh yeah what yeah. news do you have oh, yeah. as far as <laughs> We, so at the very end of the trip, we tell went, us about we it. Went, I want to hear all of it. Yes. Um, okay. So let me go ahead and say. There we go. Now. Yeah, right, right. Right. Yeah. Hear me out. <laughs> hear me out. Hear me out. So we, the first day we went there, um, uh, we went to Disney Springs, and oh, it's okay. like a like a mall complex. For mm-hmm. those of you who may not know, yep. it um, it's technically in like the Disney World area, uh, like on the map, but it's kind of disconnected it has like a bunch of like malls and shops and stuff and it's not like a park per Mm -hmm. se so our first day there we landed like at probably four or five o'clock and we kind of hung around the resort for a while we're like let's go shop around have some fun uh because we don't have any like hard plans because like we're just in case in some just in case something catastrophic happens we didn't want to have like reservations sure because we had some before and we were kind of scared we we wouldn't be able to make them Mm -hmm. so we went to Disney Springs and we looked at some shops for a second, but we found this restaurant called Maria and Enzo's down there. Hmm. And it was, we went there for dinner and it was a wonderful experience. I'm touching lightly on this because it has a, has a bigger part to play later. Okay. So that was, an, that was like a very awesome romantic spot. And, um, and it was the first thing we did. And I was like, man, this is really setting a precedent for what this trip is going to be. Because mm-hmm. it was it was a romantic spot. It was also relaxing. And it was just a chance for us to be together and be away. And just to have that time for the two of us that we both needed. Just to connect. Just to connect. Just to connect, the two of you. That's awesome. And so having that moment, I was like, man, this is really, this feels nice. Mm-hmm. Um now, Marie and Enzo's, that sounds kind of italian It is. Okay. It is. Like I said, I, I, like, so let's go ahead and fast forward. Okay. Right, the last day of the trip, I was able to convince her, because, like, our last day was kind of to, like, park, hop around and just mm-hmm. kind of catch up on all the things we missed. I convinced her that we should go back there because I loved it so much. It was so nice. Or we both loved it, but I know mm-hmm. I, for, for a fact, can say that I loved it a lot. And so just so I can set this the scene for you, um, again, for anyone who hasn't been there, the outside is nothing like really spectacular. It looks like most of the other buildings mm-hmm. around, but you walk into the doors and to the left, there's like an archway that like is kind of open to this like a uh, partnered business, which is like a, like a stone fire pizza joint. Oh, okay. So like you get the smell of this pizza when you walk in and it's like, oh, this is, this is great Ooh. on the side that you're on. It's a little bit more, um, I don't want to say bougie. It's a little more put together is what it feels like than like kind of the other mm-hmm. side over there. Sure. But it's nothing like, again, nothing extravagant, nothing mm-hmm. crazy. And there was a guy at the desk who was sitting there, like, you know, man in the little computer or whatever. So we walk up to the, the front counter and uh, I ask him for like a table for two, like you would any other restaurant. And uh, he... Uh, he goes just to like his right side or just our left side technically. Mm-hmm. And um, it's these 
two like double doors, white double doors. And he's like, he tells us like, oh, give me just a second. Let me just double check and make sure we have some space before I promise anything, you know, get, get some things together. So he goes in there and we're just kind of, you know, just sitting there minding our own business for a second. And he comes back out and he's like, right this way and opens the doors. I like that. Right Right. this way. Like, well, you'll, it'll make sense in a second. We walk through these doors and just imagine this big oval room. You're on. Whenever we entered the building, it felt like we were on the floor, first floor. Okay. You're entering the room. You're on the second floor. And it's this big oval room. Hmm. And you're at the far side of it. Like on the the far side of the oval, mm-hmm. if you will. Okay. On the other side of it is this large glass window like with panes of like glass, you know. And it's, it's high. You know, it's like it's really tall. Mm-hmm. And it overlooks this beautiful pier. And this river that we're like on, it's like a pretty big river and it's this pier and it is a beautiful night, mm. clear skies outside. And there's also this like big, um, helium balloon, like a blimp. It's not a hot air balloon, but it's like a helium balloon. Mm-hmm. It's like apparently a really big attraction. It's out there and you can see it like during the night cause it's all lit up and okay. beautiful looking. And there's a balcony that is on the left and right side. It's not connected to that window, but it's like on the left, right side of the oval and it has some tables and it wraps all the way around to where you are at the other side of that, the other uh, end of that oval of the room. And then he escorts you across like the handrail and then just to like the left side, there's like a little standing like area that has like stairs that go down and hug like the, the corner that you're on. Okay. But then whenever you're overlooking, the whole bottom floor is a bunch of like beautiful tables really beautiful warm lighting there's like some colored like purple and red kind of hues in the room as well with wonderful art that is like painted across the ceiling pillars with lights at the top of them and it's just this it's just this magnificent looking room mallory said it it made her feel like she was rose in the titanic Mm-hmm. Whenever you enter the staircase, you're overlooking everyone else, and they're all looking up at you. Okay. And as you're going down the staircases, of course, it's like you're being paraded down to everyone, and it is this beautiful experience. And so we go down, and just once you get to the bottom of the stairs, there's this other little like host stand, and they grab the menus, and of course, they're right this way over to like your table. We sit down. <laughs> so the first time we were there, I sit down. Or we're actually walking down the staircase at this point, and I, and she looks at me and is like, like mouth agape, and is like, we are significantly underdressed to be here. Is what it felt like. Sure, but we were definitely welcome to be there, and it was uh, it was a wonderful experience the first time we were there, and the food that I got was this like rigatoni with this red meat sauce, and um, she got this other some sort of pasta dish with like lots of cheese and Mm -hmm. all kinds of fun stuff. And it was amazing. And, uh, (laughs) it was, it was probably some of the best Italian food I've ever had in my life. Okay. It was so good. Um, and because like the colored lights that they had kind of like in that ambient kind of atmosphere of it, it, um, it really made the food like jump off the plate is what it felt like. Because it was just, it was like these complimenting colors that just made it feel out of this world almost. Mm-hmm. Most people don't realize you taste with your sight. Yeah. You taste with your smell. Yeah. And you taste with your taste buds. But <laughs> right. it all adds to the experience. Which of course. we've had a conversation before about. It, yeah, exactly. And that's exactly what this felt like. This felt like a beautiful experience. Um, I had made a joke a couple of times. Uh, well, hold on me before I continue with that. I asked our waiter... He was a really nice guy, and he was super cool, very accommodating. It was just like, just a super down to earth kind of mm-hmm. chill guy. And so, and I was able to, to ask him. I was like, I want a nice red wine to pair with this dish because I, I I'm already here. I already have this experience happening. I want to just make this experience just full circle. Okay. So he was like, we have this wine, Montepulciano di Abrezzo, and I was like, yeah, sure. I'll take a glass of that. And he's like, every time I go for a glass of wine here, that's the one I've been going for recently because it just hits the spot. And I was like, I trust you. Give it to okay. me. So I, I'm in the process of tasting this wine, tasting this food. And I'm like, man, this is just 
this is what I came here for mm-hmm. was these food the experiences or experience. yep. these food like moments. And I was like, oh, this is so great. And so I made the I made a joke to Mallory, and I'm coming back to what I was saying before. I was like, I'm about to shed a tear. How how beautiful this all is. And then she was like, oh, you know, we're all like kind of cutting up and having fun. She ordered a side of like a meatball in this red sauce. And it's those like handmade ones where it's about size of your, or probably a little bit smaller than your fist, but like, you know, it's about a half pound meatball. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I think it's a mixture of, they say like beef and veal and I think like maybe pork or something like that. Ooh. Oh man. And then that was the time where like Mallory gave me a bite of it. And then I looked at her and says, no shit. I actually about to bust. I'm about to, I'm about to, <laughs> I'm about to shed a tear right here. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that is the best meatball I ever had in my entire life. It was, it was just such a great moment. That was like, and that the story I'm telling right now is that, that whenever we first went there, whenever we went back though, we had like a little booth area and I was able to sit down with her and we like ordered our appetizer and stuff. I ordered another glass of that wine and we were just kind of sitting there talking and just reminiscing over our trip. Cause it was the last day mm-hmm. we we're going to be leaving out that next morning on Saturday. And, and we both had our bags there because we were, like, buying things and, you know, right. just, it was, like, backpacks or whatever. So I had the ring in the backpack. And as she was, like, putting something in her bag, I took it out mm-hmm. and popped the question right there. And she was like, oh, my gosh, like, I didn't think it was going to happen, like, on this trip at all. Because at that time, she still thought the ring didn't come in at all, I think. Right. So, anyways, it was just a very beautiful experience. And, again, this wonderful lighting, this music that's happening, this kind of, like, you know, 50s 60s kind of frank sinatra kind of jazz big band jazz kind of things happening so it's already this music i love as well with this i don't know it's just it was a whole experience and i loved it and it it was a great way to start the trip and a great way to end the trip i feel like mm-hmm. that was it was just wonderful so that's that was like the big well the smile on your face oh, yeah. i'm taking it she said <laughs> yes yes she okay. said yes and of course she loved the ring like like i had said before everyone's been complimenting me like oh you have such a great taste and ring i was like i I will tell you firsthand that I told Mallory that if I'm going to be spending that kind of money on a ring, I want her opinion on it because I know how she is. Right. I know that she's very much <laughs> she Lauren she likes what's definitely she, the same. She likes what she likes, and I was like, and so she gave me. She tells the story a little bit differently. I think she she gave me like two or three options, but the way she says it is, I gave him two options and told him to buy this one, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was like, that's basically what happened. So she gave me two options. I looked at both of them, but I could tell that. She really wanted the right. one that I got her and it's, and she loves it. And so, and again, she's get, been getting nothing but compliments. Mm-hmm. All of, all the clients that she works with, all of her coworkers and everyone else were like, oh my gosh, look at that. You know, or a lot of people are also like, I didn't notice that before. And like, cause it's new, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's a, uh, it's a little bit um, bittersweet to be back. Kind of nice to be back kind of in a rhythm again, but at the same time, it's also kind of sad. Cause I'm like, man, I just, it was an awesome experience. It, the The best way to describe it, it was Disney World. So it's sure. it's magical. It's magical. It's magical yes, all absolutely. the way around. It was just great experiences every time, and I just it was great. Um, That's awesome. So I heard That's that you're awesome. heard you're back at work full I time. Am, I am back at work full time. It was still kind of supposed to be a part time thing, but I'm pushing a little bit um, to 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 get back to the eight hours and and get right, back right. to the groove. Um, you feel I'm paying it? for it? Um, Hell no. Yeah. Um, I've probably, you know, today I've probably had the worst day um, since I've been back. To oh, work. really? Yeah. And I pushed myself too hard. and Yikes. And now I'm expecting myself to be back to the way I was before the surgery. I see. And I'm not. Oh, no. Yeah. I don't feel like the same person. Right. And so I'm having to adjust to that. Yikes. So, but it's all good. You know, we're, we're still plugging along. We're still pushing. Right. Um, I have the greatest woman on the planet yeah. in my corner. That's and, awesome. Um, it just, just getting back into the groove and just pushing to where I can get back into the shape that I need to do. That's good. I'm glad to hear that you're doing better. Like, I, I think it's, it's like you said, I think initially it's going to be steps mm-hmm. along the path to get to where you need to right. be. But I mean, Hey, that's, as long as you're not going backwards, I guess that's the only thing. Right. <laughs> right. Um, that's right. Yeah. But uh, everything for the trip went really well. All the travel was fine. There was only like a little bit trying to come back home. Obviously, I didn't think very far ahead. Like, you know, um, coming out of Orlando, it was like a big international airport. And mm-hmm. It was like you know, just 
just as chaotic as any other big international right. airport would be. Sure. So I just forgot about that mm-hmm. <laughs> until we got there. And I was like, oh, damn it, I forgot it. Sometimes it's so. better to fly into Tampa mm. and just drive up to Orlando. Right, right. I, I lived in Tampa for a while. Yeah. And um, I had some friends, and normally I always come home for Christmas and things like that. Mm-hmm. And I had some friends, um, William and Ellen, and their family. And I, they were kind of sad I couldn't make it home for Christmas. Right. So they packed the whole family up, and they drove to see me wow. at Christmas time. How nice. And on Christmas Day, we were like, what are we going to do? <laughs> yeah. And we went to Universal Studios. Nice. And the great thing about this little story here is that that's the best day to go. Oh, to yeah. Universal Studios. I bet. Because everybody... Is at Disney. Yeah. We didn't see the next customer until 3.30 that afternoon. Oh, my gosh. It was like when we pulled up into the park, it was like vacation. Yeah. The movie vacation when he pulled up and there was nobody there. Right. Except you could see the employee parking lot was full. Right. But we pulled up to the first row. Yeah. We kind of walked out. We were kind of curious, like, oh, and the ticket lady was waving at us. Right, and right. So y'all are open? Oh, yeah, we're open and we're fully staffed. Wow. And we were like, okay. Yeah. Well, let us in. Then. <laughs> yeah, right. And we were able to do, like, the rides four or five oh, times man. in a row and didn't have to get <laughs> off of anything and just had our feel of everything. And we yeah. really didn't see the first person until, like, 3 or 3.30. And it was awesome. And I have some pictures in my keepsake box of right. us and the family together. There was nobody in the park. That's so cool. You know, so hint to our listeners. Yeah. That, you know, if you want to go to Universal Studios, I think right. Christmas Day is probably the best day to go to wow. Universal Studios because everybody's at Disney with the kids. Yeah. I believe um, the research that Mallory and I did, we found out that January and September are the cheapest days because they're the least popular days mm-hmm. to go in Disney. And there was, there's like a, a, a Halloween party in Magic Kingdom some of the days. Okay. And one of the days we were able to go to Magic Kingdom and it, it it's like the day we like park hopped around mm-hmm. and it closes early. And really? so, well, yeah, cause it, cause like you, everyone that doesn't have a uh, invitation to the, or has the, the ticket to the party has to leave at like six. Okay. So if six till whenever is the party, you have to have a special ticket for. So we could go there most of the morning, but because of that, because you only get like limited access to the park, no one schedules going to the park that day unless they have that special party. Right. Well, because we're park hopping, we're like, we're going to be out after lunch anyways. So it doesn't matter. We went there and there was like nobody around. It was, it was so cool Mm -hmm. because that, that, that uh that same sort of thing where it's like i mean there's still people around but it definitely like the waits for those big rides were not as um not as not as uh as long as they normally would have been and so it was it was really cool to be able to to see the magic kingdom uh, like a second time to see it just less crowded Mm -hmm. and just a a lot of people and it was one of those days where the weather was a little better we got a lot of really nice pictures like i got this one that i have right now of uh well i say that of course you can can't see it but it's uh mallard oh, right wow. there wow look at that yeah that's awesome <laughs> in front of the castle and everything mm-hmm. so anyways but um one of the funny things that we realized whenever we came back home is we didn't take a car there we just took buses right. everywhere because the transportation's so good and i didn't want to stress about having to deal with a car while we're out there and again we've had reservations for all these wonderful mm-hmm. dining restaurants all the all the days we were there and we just we were you know, being catered to every day. So we, we get back home <laughs> and my friend Dylan obviously picks us up from the airport. Very, very gracious of that. He, we, we get back to our home here and he's, uh, <laughs> and Mallory and I are like, we have to go to the store for something. And I was like, Oh man, we have to like drive ourselves to the store again. <laughs> <laughs> and then of course I was like, and what are we going to do for supper? And she's like, Oh, I forgot. We have to like, cook for ourselves again and i was like yeah it's so funny how we just felt um super spoiled so how was it then to go to work oh man next monday after Um, a week of that i still feel like i'm not like you know uh super sharp you know everything still kind of feels a little foggy because also like when i right when i got back home i kind of started feeling a little icky 
Um, and it only lasted for like 24 hours. And then I kind of, I have been feeling a lot better. I'm just mm. on the downwind of it all. So like physically I feel great, but like not being at work for like a week and then trying to get back right in the rhythm of things. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, trying to take notes on things. Cause I'm like, Oh man, I'm, for, I'm like forgetting certain things. I'm just not, not kind of back to my normal self again. So, uh, but it's, it's all good though, but it's, uh, it's definitely been interesting. So. Anybody at work give you any ribbon? Oh, I mean, oh, you know, because of the place that I work in, there's numerous people mm-hmm. that have uh, given me the the elbow, the eh, and I'm like, right. yeah, yes, yes, that is that's exactly what happened because you know, I told a handful of people, and then of course, word travels fast, so mm-hmm. so every, every person around has been asking, like, you know, uh, the, the big thing that I, I was t- telling everyone was I was nervous that it wasn't going to come in in time. I ordered it like what I thought was ample time before mm-hmm. and um because i just didn't want the ring just like sitting around anywhere and it had to be like handmade and then shipped out and it was it was coming down to the wire so i was telling everyone like are you excited for your trip and i was like i'm excited for the trip but i'm also a little nervous because like i want to propose but like the ring's not here yet mm-hmm. and i don't i mean yes it, it would probably be just as romantic and nice if I was to propose without the ring but I was like I, I just I want to do this right is what I th- what it felt right. like and um <laughs> so whenever the ring eventually came there and I started spreading the word everyone was like you know everyone at work is like cheering and all excited and happy for me and stuff so whenever I came back that was definitely everyone's uh mm-hmm. um everyone was you know definitely poking fun a little bit but also you know they're they were also just as excited as everyone sure. else was so well, I'm thrilled for you. I think that's awesome. Yeah. I'm I, happy for you. And, uh, my my mom was able to, uh, mom, if you're listening out there, hello, shout out to you. I, uh, she had some time off, like right whenever I uh, had some, some free time that Sunday afternoon mm-hmm. when I got back. And so I was like, I, I mean, I want her to hear it from me. I don't want her to hear from the grapevine because heaven forbid. Or on the it, show. It, it, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. Heaven forbid she hears it from some other way. I'm, gonna, I'm never going to hear the end of, end, end of it. Which I don't blame her though. Mm-hmm. So we both, Mather and I, went over there and spent some time with her and talked with her for a while and stuff. And it was, uh, it was great. And I'm just, it really makes me happy that both Mallory loves my mom and then vice versa. My mom loves yes. Mallory a lot. That makes it, it a little bit easier. It makes it so so right. much nicer. Mm-hmm. So it, uh, it makes me happy to see them, you know, cutting up and just, you know, they they both have a way, and I love them both dearly. But they both have a way of making my life harder in some way. You know, really just really just jab like kicking me while I'm down is what it feels like sometimes Mm -hmm. but it makes me so happy to see that they get along so well that they can do that they can just cut up and you know Mm -hmm. I'm okay I'm well that's what their uh, job is to make their life miserable now (laughs) exactly and I love and miserable right and that's the thing is I and I love them both for it and that's it makes me so happy Mm -hmm. so yeah but anyways that's been that's been the big thing for me um recently I, I was able to buy so many nice things I'm a big fan of Star Wars and so there's the, I haven't been since like 2013 mm-hmm. and they didn't start building the Star Wars stuff until I want to say like 16 or 17 right. or so or something like that. Whenever the new sequel of movies mm-hmm. came out and um, man, again, you want to talk about experience. I have, uh, I've been in some like places where they really like, like a haunted house or something. Mm-hmm. Like they really try to capture an atmosphere you know but man like disney has got that on lockdown of like really making a place feel like it's out of this world Mm -hmm. and that was something that was as a fan of like the series uh, or like or at least has watched it since he was a a, you know a, a child um being able to go from hollywood studios which is just like normal uh normal buildings normal streets you know, mm-hmm. hustle and bustle to kind of go in this like tunnel. It looks like it's made out of like mud and rock and all this stuff, and then enter out in this other world. And it really does feel like you're part of this like Star Wars universe that I've mm-hmm. seen so many times before, only in films. And then to look and see the the ships and these like, I mean, because uh, you know, I am who I am. I could I could look at it and see those are like not real mountains, but like you're looking at them like that looks like a real mountain like right. past this tree line and these like, you know, these tubes and this like 
like worn down metal and stuff and just it just feels so real and lived in and it's like i just was there and even mallory was like this is mallory is not really a big fan Mm -hmm. she she's she knows about it by proxy through me sure but she was able to walk through and go like this is actually really cool and i was like right um so uh let me just i want to show you at least one picture that i have here sometimes the experience that we have in life can take away from something because it's like you said i I know that's not real but it was fun to look at and you gotta just let yourself experience and that and that was all saying yeah so i was i was looking at it and i was like i know because i'm an adult i know this is disney world that is a manufactured like skyline Mm -hmm. but as you're looking at it like there it feel it like you can see it it's like different layers of like there's a mountain far away then there's trees and there's buildings and i'm like because of my logical brain, I know that that's not like a naturally occurring thing right. here in Florida, but like, but I'm able to walk through this and suspend disbelief enough that I'm like, if it, it, but even though I probably logically know it's not real, if I just woke up one day, I'd be like, I'm just here now. And mm-hmm. like this real place, but like, like this is a, a prime example of what I'm talking about. Like oh, a, wow. A life scale. That's insane. That's the millennium Falcon. And there's like a wow. building and these mountains that are all, that's insane. Right. And it's just this uh this beautiful experience of like I can't believe that I'm here in front of this ship that I've seen mm-hmm. in the film so many times and it's right. it is every bit as grand as you'd imagine it would be and you're like, Man, this is unreal. Now and was then, it something you could go inside the ship or you could just look outside? You could just it? look outside. Oh, it. See, it'd have been really cool yeah. if they did the inside. And yeah. You could take a tour through the Millennium Falcon. Right. You you could go on like a ride and they kind of like it pretends like you're going inside of it and there's like an interior that is dressed up like the movie is. So you're okay. not technically inside that model, but you're inside like what it looks like in the movie. So there is like a way you can like be quote unquote inside the Millennium okay. Falcon. And so I was like looking around and I have like a picture of uh me with r2d2 inside the millennium falcon <laughs> we're just chilling out with this that's uh awesome. <laughs> yeah that's so it's, awesome it's a really cool experience where uh you know every little detail even like the little card reader like your little um like you can imagine just going to like walmart and the thing you like you put your chip card in like or you you swipe your card at the little till even that had like um extra stuff on it to make mm-hmm. it look like it was a piece of um Star Wars stuff. Okay. And it had like, even on the screen where like it normally says like remove card, it has it in like a Star Wars font. Where really? like it, Yeah, where like okay, even like, like cool. exactly. So like you're like in this, every every aspect of it feels like you're part of this world and it's like this mm-hmm. is so unique and different than like anything I've ever really experienced like a, just a theme park or something. Right. And it's super cool. And they, they even have like a, Mallory wanted to collect it but they have um, these Coke bottles and they look like the grenades in the Star Wars film. So Hmm. um, in Star Wars, they have an alphabet that they go by. Mm -hmm. Um, And so this, uh, this Coca-Cola bottle has the Star Wars. Wow. Yeah. And it will, cause also Disney, I think has like a partnership with Coke. So they have all Coke products there. So they had like a Sprite like this, a diet Coke, a Coke, I think like a Dasani water bottle as well, but it has like the, the special Star Wars um, I see that. That's pretty neat. font on it. Mm-hmm. And it was like super cool looking, but you could even see just the background of like mm-hmm. pipes and tubes and worn down buildings. You're like, this has been a place that's been here for forever. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyways, it's just all kinds of stuff like that. That's super cool. Mallory's a big fan of all the, the Disney princesses. So being able to go to Magic Kingdom and see Cinderella's castle and all its grandeur and its mm-hmm. massive self, she's like, this is, you know, this is amazing. Um, one, I think one thing that I had described to her before was, for me, flying was this experience of, like, you, you, you can, uh, this is how I felt, and she didn't really feel that way, this is, which is why I'm saying this is whenever I was flying, I I may have been high before, but whenever I went flying for the first time, I got to look out the window and, and see myself go through the clouds and overlook all these cities and these streetlights at night and to overlook this world in a whole new way. And then I described whenever like there is that blanket of clouds mm-hmm. over everything and you go past it, 
and it just looks like you're over this like land of clouds and this clear sky above you and it just feels like you're in this heaven almost i was like for me that was this like awe inspiring moment where i was like this is phenomenal and i've never seen anything like this before she said that she kind of had that experience a little bit while flying for the first time but whenever she got to magic kingdom and was able to see the castle Mm-hmm. in person she was like that was that for me where she was like this right. is unreal and it just feels so much more grand than it actually is and then mm-hmm. later that night to see everything lit up with the lights and the fireworks and these just this like these beautiful like i mean the production quality is mm-hmm. <laughs> through the roof of like these cute uh, firework explosions with the music and it's just it's insane. Mm-hmm. So it was. It was just a. It was a wonderful experience. Well, I'm glad you around. had a good time. I'm glad it turned <laughs> out the way you wanted. But while you were gone, we okay. had some headlines. Oh uh, yes. Namely, one of them being uh, California passed a law that says by 2035, all vehicles are going to have to be electric. Really, and I didn't know within, that. Within the week, they announced rolling blackouts of their electricity. And so Stop. somebody told me this great joke, and I want to share it with you. What's okay. the difference between California and the Titanic? I don't know. When the Titanic sank, its lights were still on. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, that's good. Uh, they're, they're, they're having a hard time now convincing people of, you know, we're going to have to spend more money on this electric. Now, look, I, I'm all for responsibility fiscal responsibility climate responsibility if there's a better and safer way we can do something we need to do it yeah but how are you going to convince people now to buy an electric car when they can't even charge it Mm -hmm. um colorado did you see what happened there um it's a xl is the energy company there okay and they made it to where the residents could not lower their thermostat below 78 degrees. What? There's a big, huge thing about this now. And I'm just like, this is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> no, thank um, you. I and don't... there's a number of states that are thinking about following through, like California. And I mean, like, hey, look, if we have the technology, let's go that route. But we right. don't. We don't have the infrastructure for it. Yeah. We don't have. And if you're doing rolling blackouts because you don't have enough power, how are people going to power their cars? Right. How are people going to do anything at that point? Because I sure. mean, like, so many things are done through power now, yeah. at least. I'm just thinking also something as simple as like charging your phone. And people, there's a lot of things that are done on, on your phone now. And I had a friend of mine who bought one of these electric cars and they bought it for a little bit less of a price. It was used. Yeah. And they got into it and they were really happy about it. They had the charging station installed. But about two months into it, it started acting funny and wouldn't take a charge. Uh And they think the person that sold it to them knew this. Ah, I see. And so they went and took it to the dealer and said, hey, you know, what's wrong with it? They said, well, you need new batteries. Okay. All right. Well, how much? (laughs) $28,000. Just go buy a new one at that point. And they're like, wait a minute. You know, yeah. only bought the car. Well, that's what it's going to cost you is $28,000. And so they're sitting there struggling with this now Yeah. to see what they want to do. And I'm really all for it, but we have to have a better way to do this. Yeah. Especially when you're mandating by a certain year, which is very close. Yeah. That we have to stop all of this. We're approaching 10 years. Yeah. Since yeah. T- until that yeah. happens. What is that? 12? Yeah. So we need to think about what we're doing. I mean, yeah. also, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I, I, I how, how do you feel about the whole electric car and um, are you ready for that yet? Yes and no. I feel like, um, one thing I was going to say before I continue with my statement with that is like, I, um, I hear what you're saying. I agree, but also I feel like, to be a devil's advocate, I feel like a lot can happen in 10 years sure, or 12 years, to be honest. But what I'm nervous about is now like you're putting a pressure on it. So like, mm-hmm. so I feel like in some cases that can help because it's like really making people realize like, well, we got to do something before the time runs out. So I feel like that could be helpful, but it's also like, but 
how much you're going to burn down to get there is what it kind of right. Feels, no, feels absolutely. Like. What what safety features are we going to pass up to get yeah. to that goal? Right. Are things that we're going to not yeah. think about because we need to get there so quickly. Or like another thing that makes me think about it is like one thing you got to realize is that people are going to try and make money off this no mm-hmm. matter what. So it's like at what point in time are we going to like? I know you're probably trying to make electric cars more readily accessible or like make them more like mandated there. But then at that point, like what, what harm are we going to do in the process of trying to get there is what I feel like what's going to happen. But anyways, my and then ta- ta- tackle that on top of with the whole COVID and the chip thing from Taiwan. Oh yeah. Now you're going to need more chips yeah. in these electric cars than you did in Before. your gas powered car and we already have a huge chip shortage. One there. thing I'm actually kind of curious about like I didn't, I didn't even think about is like is there going to be like a barrier where like you can't bring like a, a like a petrol car like a like a gas powered car to California? Right. Like 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 could so does that mean if I don't own an electric car I can't feasibly take a road trip to California? You know what I mean? Wow. Like, that's a great that, thought. That's a just great an thought idea. right there. Or it's like or does it just mean like residents of that Mm-hmm. Like to if you have a California driver's license, you can't purchase a vehicle that's not electric or something like wow, that. Wow, that's great. That's a great thought right there. I didn't, even thought, I didn't thought that far in right. advance to it, but that's a great thought. Just an idea, because like like is there like is there gonna be like a like a like a like a fence like a border patrol? It's like mm-hmm. you can't have your gas powered car here right. or I don't know, just something like that. I don't know, but wow, I don't know. That was just an idea. That no, that's a great thought. Uh, that's but, why we have these conversations, yeah, right? My. uh my idea of like the electric car is like I'm all for like the the progress of technology. I think it's I think there's a I, mean, I, I don't think Tesla's perfect, but like I think that Tesla has done a lot in mm-hmm. like the in sure. the innovation of like the the um, accessibility of this really awesome technology. So I don't want to stifle that at all. But I also don't feel like I I don't think we should be so quick to like mandate like everything. I know that gas powered cars are probably not good for the environment and they have a whole bunch of other reasons, but like there may be a way in the future that you're able like to really just get rid of all of it. But I still mm-hmm. feel like there's always going to be somebody that I think will want to either work on it or drive mm-hmm. in that kind of capacity. Well, I was reading part of a study that said the process of making the electric cars, the batteries and the plastics yeah. and all of these things negate what it would say <laughs> from yeah, the right. environment from the gas powered cars. Right. I've heard the same. So sort there's of thing a well. huge balance there. And I, th- I think we need to, we need to go this direction. I think we need to look at things that can save the environment. Right. And help the environment because that's just good responsibility it is good. A human being looking after our planet, looking after their fellow human beings. We need to look at this. Yeah. But mandating something I'm kind of iffy on. And that, yeah. And, and that comes down to a governmental, I have the right to do what I want. Right. So. I don't know. I, I like, I, I don't know. There's a whole lot of stuff that I, know that, that I think is like above my knowledge base of like, I, I don't quite know, you, you know, all the, the um the numbers and the stats and all the right so i i, I feel hard to kind of have like a strong steadfast opinion on it but like the thing that i'm more kind of inclined to talk about that i've, I've, I've more of a feeling of is like the self-driving aspect of it is like i like the idea of like a self-driving car because i love the convenience of it but i don't think that we should ever get rid of i mean maybe this is wrong but i is like getting rid of the human element of it. Mm-hmm. I, I think see. we should have both. I agree with you. I think there should be right. both because they're finding out most of the accidents caused in this accident mm. were the actual human driver in the other car, not the self-driven car. Right, right. Someone cutting it off or trying to cutting it off or right, right. just being an all-around jerk. Right, right. Just and having so, human flaws. Yeah. Yes. And right. so that's kind of interesting there too. Right. I And that's where it's like... Um, this is may this may be where future generations may look at me and go, "Ah, oh, look at you, you old timer." But it's like I enjoy the idea of driving a car, even if it's mm-hmm. like an electric vehicle. I think I enjoy. Maybe this is another side of me where I want to be a pilot. It's like I love being able to like drive a car to 
I, I want to fly a plane one day. Anytime I do the I've experience of it, right, right? The experience of getting in a muscle car, or the oh, experience yeah. of getting that first electric car and the second car, the torque. Yeah, yeah. You know that the you know from zero to sixty. Yeah, you know, things like that are the, an experience. The second car that I owned was a Mini Cooper S. Okay, and it was a standard transmission, supercharged, mm -hmm. little bitty, like. I mean, low to the ground. Fast as hell, it was, though, it was low, it? low to the ground, and it was wide, mm -hmm. and so, and it didn't have like a, it didn't have, it didn't have like a really um, high top speed. Mm -hmm. But man, was it quick! Mm -hmm. That's always what I used to tell people. I was like, it may not be able to like prolong at like eighty miles an hour or ninety, but like, boy, it'll get there in a minute. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> and that was, uh, <laughs> and that's one thing that I enjoyed was I didn't think that I would enjoy as much as I did until I hop inside this really nice car. And it like it had a really good transmission in it, so it was very smooth shifting, and it was very quick, and it was fun, and it sounded kind of and mm -hmm. like you know. So whenever I had that car after going from like an automatic transmission, I loved the feeling of like I felt like I had, I felt like every bit of this how this car is working. I know that's not true, but I felt like every bit of how this car is functioning, like I have some sort of hand in or control sure. of. Without me shifting these gears, this car is not going to function properly. Mm -hmm. And it just had one more aspect of like like a hands-on, more human experience, I think. And I enjoyed it, every minute of it. Um, that car ended up, you know, not lasting very long. It had a lot of temperamental issues. But uh, No, but that's great. Yeah, and yeah. there's a saying out there right now um, with the millennials and the ones after you. <laughs> yeah, right, that right. if we started riding in cursive and made all the cars <laughs> stick shift, we could cripple a generation. You're right, 100%. And I grew up learning how to stick shift. Yeah. Um, and so those things are really, really important, but that adds, and maybe somehow we need to, the, the experience of retrospect in our title or something, because yeah. we're always talking about the experience of something yeah. and driving is an experience. If you go to Europe, they don't do, they don't drive the same way we do. They have right. driving jackets. They have driving gloves. They have little driving hats. Yeah. Driving over there is not a right. It's a privilege. Yeah. And they enjoy it. There's no cup holders. There's no things like that. When they when they want to drive somewhere, right. they want to do it. Oh, of course. And they want to experience it. Yeah. And like in Cuba, after the, the um, Fidel Castro took over, there's been no new cars going to Cuba. They're all the old 1950s and from American really? cars. Yeah, so they are, they're smuggling in the parts to keep those going, and oh, they man. soup them up, and they race them, and they do things like that. So driving for people is an experience. Right. For Americans, it's different because now we want to move so when – we, when we get 18 and get married and we want to move so far away from our parents and – we don't mind living an hour away from work now. Right. And people drive in. There's a guy at my work that drives in an hour and a half every day. Wow. Well, that's an hour and a half in and an hour and a half. There's three hours a day on top of his shift Yeah, that he's associated with work because they want to live way out in the country. Interesting. And I kind of get that, but wow. Yeah, that's a trip. We don't look at driving the same way other cultures do. Right. Anyway, at least around where we live, there's not a whole lot of like um, pedestrian traffic areas mm -hmm. in like the city we kind of are slash like bike areas. So it's like like if you don't have a car, like you're really at a detriment. Mm -hmm. So around here, like instead of driving being a privilege and being something that you can experience and have fun with, it feels like an obligation kind or of necessity. Yes. yes. I sure. love that. Yes. Is what it feels a like. Sure. And yes, really, it right, is. Right, and so, so it kind of takes away what could be fun because, like, you know, you have to upkeep it. It's expensive mm -hmm. and insurance and, you know, you, you name it. There's just a number of things that I can. I drive Magnus crazy because I don't want food or drink in the car. Yes. Really. I don't want to spill it or yeah. French fries under the seat that my, give this little horrible odor after a couple of months. Yes, and my, my pet peeve is uh, feet on the dash. Yes, Shoes or no shoes, don't put your feet on my dash, please. Mm -hmm. I don't no, like I have, we have <laughs> yeah, right. to share that one right there. <laughs> right. Um, yep. Love you to death. Don't 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 yeah. put your feet on my. It was one time I was in a friend's back seat, and I think their either their friend or whatever had their bare toes on the on the dash and their toes on the window uh, on the, like on the the uh, front windshield. Mm -hmm. I was about to have an aneurysm. I was like, oh, please get your toes off the window. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was like, I can't do it. Nope, I so, share that with right, you. Right. <laughs> so yeah, but anyways, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a. It's it's a crazy time. 
so like I said, that's where I, I feel like I'm in this kind of middle ground of like, I don't, I don't think that we should like hard and fast stop all mm-hmm. production of like potential um, new ideas or moving forward mm-hmm. in some way to help better the planet in some capacity. But sometimes I, uh, I think also need to just, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like people need to ask the question, like instead of making it money, like instead of capitalizing on um, a profit or something like that, is 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 this is this what's really going to be best for everyone? Sure, you know? but I don't think people ask right. that question. Well, enough. what's the story about that guy who invented an um, uh, engine that could run off of water? Yeah, and yeah. it was really a hydrogen produce, and he died. They yeah. killed him. They stole his stuff, killed him. He accidentally committed suicide or something. Oh, yeah, right, right. And he was gone. <laughs> so because it's all about profit. Right. That's what it's about. Right. And somehow and, and I'm I'm a capitalist. I get it. Yeah. I'm more of a fiscal conservative with liberal tendencies. I believe every there's a lot of people out there who need help. I just wanna know how we're gonna pay for it. Right. And I don't think that's unreasonable. Yeah. Um, there's a saying that I, I kind of like is if you're not a liberal when you're 18, it means you don't have a heart. But if you're not a, <laughs> if you're not a conservative when you're 40, it means you have no brain. You're right, right. <laughs> and, and we just need to know how we're going to do it. Right. Let's, and that's, and that's, that's how I feel a lot. There about should well. be profit in it. Right. But Elon Musk comes out and he's got the Tesla thing and you know, there's no patents on that car. He shares yeah. the technology. Anybody can have that technology. Yeah. And like he's still the wealthiest man on the planet, right? By I, sharing what he knows, I have like a. I've had this problem in my own life, like in my kind of early to mid twenties, where I was worrying about the future too much, mm-hmm. and I really just was I, like I just was I got to live in the now. I got to really, you know, be present in my life right now because I feel like I'm passing things up because I'm not focusing on it. Mm-hmm. But now I feel like, and where I am right now, I feel like I'm, I kind of have went in the opposite direction where I feel like I'm, I'm worried a little bit too much in the now. I need mm-hmm. to kind of be more prepared for the future slash also look back at my past and kind of learn from mistakes that I made and stuff like that. And I'm kind of going through that currently. Um, but isn't and, that what we're talking about kind right. of with the cars? Right. There needs well, to be a midline or a medium right. or, where you you know you need to worry about the future. Right. And you need to kind of prepare for it. Yep. But let's look at me in the last year. I've yeah. had a stroke and had a brain removed. Yep. I really want to look into the future. I want a, a long life with Miranda. But I also need to worry about what's going on right now, too. Right. And well, I need and to cherish every single moment that I have exactly. with her. And exactly. then plan for a life with her, but also plan for other stuff too. Yeah. And and I, I was kind of paralleling that to what happens with that kind of stuff, or at least what it feels like with people in those like corporate businesses mm-hmm. like that. It really does feel like right now, um, they may look into the future, but like they're the big question is what's making me money right now. Right. You know? I agree. 100%. And, that's, and sometimes I feel like we need to really, like there's nothing wrong with thinking that way, but at the same time also be like, but if we don't have a planet to live on, like how are we going <laughs> to, you're not mm-hmm. going to be able to make any money if we can't exactly. breathe the air anymore. So there's <laughs> got to be a balance right. in responsibility and profit. Right. So I don't know. Again, I'm, I, I'm just saying that I have no idea how to fix that. So don't come after me because I don't know. How to, but I mean, mm-hmm. you know, that's, I think it's an interesting topic to, to speak on. But uh, in my own life, that's, that's why this vacation that I went on, was so valuable because I I needed a chance to kind of reset and relax and mm-hmm. then you know look ahead. We want right. to plan. Our, Mallory and I want to plan more trips. The two of us to just kind of be able sure. to ex- see the world together. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's going to take me setting money aside and being responsible with it and you know doing all that kind of stuff. And so, mm-hmm. but anyways, so there was one more headline. Yes, it is, and that was the Queen. Of England passed. Mm-hmm. I, that's really captured the world, really, and all of the headlines yeah. with what's going on with that. And it's crazy. This, you have to think about it. This is a, a public servant of 70 years. 70 years. Isn't that insane? I heard this is what was uh, 
what I thought was very uh, uh, interesting to hear was someone had said um, Queen Elizabeth II um, has been a the, the ruling monarch for 30% of the United States like conception. Mm-hmm. And I started thinking about that for a second. And I was like, man, that is, that is nuts mm-hmm. to think about. Um, yeah, it, uh, it definitely hit me kind of out of left field. I, I mean, obviously I knew she was in her nineties. So I mean, obviously, mm-hmm. you know, things are bound to happen, but, um, it's like with most public figures or, um, celebrities in some way it just kind of happens. And, uh, uh, it, it just feels, how do you put it into words? You know, it's probably going to happen. It's mm-hmm. bound to happen at some point. You know, we're all human. We all live and die in, in some capacity. B- but whenever it does happen, you're like, man, I just didn't think it was going to happen right now. You know, like sure. that kind of thing, which I'm pretty sure her and probably her family thought the same sort of situation. But with this is like, she has been, um, a public figure for many people's entire lives. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, I've known about her for, you know, a long, long time. I think they said she went through like 15 prime ministers. That's crazy. <laughs> um, <laughs> and the, and another crazy thing to think about is the fact that like, at least for the foreseeable future, if not many of our lifetimes, we may not ever have a person like that ever again. Right. A, a person in power or a monarch or a celebrity of any kind that has like a, such a pivotal mm-hmm. role for that amount of time. It's, it was like, this is kind of a once in a lifetime situation. And now that this happened, um, this feels like a piece of history right mm-hmm. here. I, I mean, in, I mean, you know, for those of you who, who take shots every time I, I mention it, when I lived in Canada, I, I lived in a country where it was, uh, you know, the the end all be all was the queen, mm-hmm. uh, you know, over, even though we had a prime minister, um, the queen of England was on our, our $20 notes. Mm-hmm. And so like, even then, like I lived in a country that had ties to the queen as well. And I paid my dues and I, you know, mm-hmm. my taxes and whatnot and did my stuff. And, um, so it's like, it's just interesting to, mm-hmm you know, to be at this point in time in history, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, so. uh, Miranda has some ancestral ties back to England. Yeah. So this has kind of kind of caused her some thought process in there too. And so, mm-hmm. you know, I just, it, it's it's really sad. Yeah. But, man, you know, this lady was a public servant for 70 yeah. years and did it gracefully. Oh, yeah. Did it gracefully. Right. I'm not saying she's perfect. Not saying anything like right. that. She was just very dignified. And, and that's part of the rules that the royal hey, family has exactly. to do. And they got this list of 600 rules that they got to follow and <laughs> right. do and don't wear and don't cross your leg. You know, oh. Yes. But she did it. Yep. And, um, you know, there's some stuff that has come out with uh, Harry and Meghan Markle and uh, Princess Diana and what, yeah. what role did she have and, all you know, some of these things and, you know what? The lady's still 70 years as a public servant. That's awesome. Yeah, it's insane. And, um, you know, uh, Charles has been, you know, a 73-year-old unemployed man, you know, that finally had to get a job now. He's <laughs> <came. laughs> so uh, we'll see what right, he has right. to do. And now everybody's kind of freaking about about what kind of decisions he's going to make. Of course. Yeah, I mean, because now it's, you know. It's, it's on him. It's on him now. When I was in Disney, uh, um I got the news, um, and uh, it was it was a really, it really, uh, you know, just it, it kind of it just it grounds you, sure, you know. Uh, so we're having this fun time and this this fun experience, and to kind of have this news kind of come about, and then of course we're in Disney World where we have people from all nationalities. I mean, I'm taking buses to places. I'm hearing these two people speak in French and these two people over here are in Spanish. And I think those guys maybe are speaking Portuguese. I'm not, mm-hmm. I can't even tell what it is. You know, so it's like, I'm, there's like people from all around the world that are experiencing this magical place on earth. And then with that, there's people from the UK and from Scotland and from, you know, all around us. Mm-hmm. 
we were taking the monorail and I had, you know, had said something to these, this older couple and they're having their fun, having their vacation, doing the same kind of things that we're doing as a couple, but they're, you know, probably 20 years older than us or 30 years older than us. And I, and we're talking to them and I can tell they have like a Europe or I, I, I could tell they, they have like a Scotland English accent. I couldn't really, mm-hmm. really place it. And I got to talking to them for a second and I was like, what are your thoughts on this? You know, cause I mean, that's, that is your, uh, monarch. That is your mm-hmm. end all be all. And they're like, you know, it's, uh, it's gonna, it's gonna, it, it's, it is a, it's a sad time for us as well. Like, I mean, that, that is our queen. She's been awesome and she's been mm-hmm. a, nothing like you just said, like dignified and very put together. And it's sad. I mean, not only for the country, but then for the family that is, mm-hmm. she was it, a mother it, and a grandmother. It's kind of one of those things like, 9-11 just passed. Right, right. You know exactly what you were doing when 9-11 happened. I yep. knew exactly what I was doing when the queen passed. Yes. I remember when the, we got the news, I was in school, and all of a sudden, all the teachers, every they're bawling, crying, yeah. and Elvis died. Oh, yeah. I, re- I remember my teacher, and I remember all the teachers coming together and just crying because Elvis had died. Wow. Can you imagine what it was like? I remember when... Uh, Hinckley tried to assassinate Ronald Reagan. Mm. Um, can you imagine what it was like when uh, JFK got assassinated? Yeah, yeah. You, every these are one of those moments in life that you will remember what yep. you were doing. Everyone stops. Every, yes. Yeah. And it kind of joins people together for that brief moment. Yep. So yeah. just a thought. But. Well, and yeah. So the, like I said, she she was uh so talking to this couple. They were like. I could, I kind of had said, I'm, I, excuse me for being ignorant in this situation, but I don't know what, I, I, what happens next. Like, I, I mean, I've said, no, it's probably going to get passed down to somebody, but I was like, but what does this mean for the country? And they're like, I don't think it's going to mean a whole lot. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's going to be involved with some decision making on mm-hmm. King Charles's, you know, behalf. And then the, 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 the guy out of the, the, the couple that we were talking to, he had said he kind of made a, a like a joking remark in this kind of somber time to kind of lift the mood. And he's like, "One thing I'm curious about is that the queen's face is on all of our currency." Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he's like, "We got to get all that changed out now." That's kind of that's kind of how that works, apparently. Is that, it really? I think so. He's oh, like, "That's okay. did not know that." Oh, right. Well, because again, they haven't had to worry about it. I in just 70 thought years. the new money would be printed with the new king. On. <laughs> well, I think I think it is. But I mean, and he's I, 73. He right. might not be around that long. Ex- that, exactly. Because so, what and, is they said he's the oldest person to take over the throne now yeah, she, says, she served longer than anybody he's the oldest to take over the right throne. exactly it says that um he was the longest serving heir apparent mm-hmm. in british history and at age 73 is the oldest person to assume the throne mm-hmm. wow that's interesting and he will be 74 this november okay um but anyways uh so <laughs> So he was he was saying that the, like because we haven't had to worry about a situation like that in the past seventy years, it hasn't really been a big deal. And I think I think what he was meaning was is like the the other currency is probably still going to be right. used, but like mm-hmm. like you're saying they're going to probably print, new, print stuff. new stuff. But at a certain point, like like I have Canadian currency with the Queen's face on it. Like at at some point, is that going to be like a piece of history? You know, like that kind of stuff where mm-hmm. like I have twenty dollar bills with Queen Elizabeth on it. And it's just interesting to think wow. about. You know, like. Wow. That is a, a, you know, didn't think about that until I got back home and I was like, yeah, this is a. Do you have anything smaller than a 20 with her picture on it? No, I think it's other, like the fives and the tens and stuff are all different people in okay. Canadian um, uh, mm-hmm. legislation, I think. But uh, she was on the 20 because that, wow. that was the most common bill. Okay. Uh, yeah. So it was, and I think like the, the one and $2 coins had like um, landmarks, like, like a maple leaf or like mm-hmm. something else on it, I think. Okay. So, but anyways. Yeah, I have Interesting. A, I have a handful of them. I or, or, well, I, I say handful. I probably have a couple of them, but I may want to talk to you about getting one just for the historical value yeah. of it, if you wouldn't mind. I just think put that in my little keepsake box. Yeah. Just hey, I remember where I was when the Queen passed. Yeah, and it's just so interesting that these are one of the things that you're gonna remember what you were doing and where you were. Yeah, I was actually uh, I was in uh, I was making my my uh handcrafted uh lightsaber mm-hmm. i got to i got to in the the 
uh, Galaxy's Edge, like the Star Wars experience mm-hmm. over at uh, Hollywood Studios, I got to make my own um, my own lightsaber, and it, and then we got the news right then and there, which is kind of an interesting experience. Now, can I tell you a, f- a funny story? Sure. About this makes me sad because I am a collector of things, and it makes me sad that I didn't get a chance to get it. I'm going to spoil the end of the story. I didn't get what I'm about to talk about. Um. Uh. So, there was, we went to Epcot, mm-hmm. and in the uh, United Kingdom slash, like, England area of the World Showcase, they had a, like, a tea shop. Again, it's England, so you can get mm-hmm. boxes of tea, little paraphernalia, like, all the different little spoons and all that kind of stuff. I love connect, collecting mugs. Mm-hmm. I love collecting mugs. I have a few tea sets where I got the pot, I got the saucer, the cup. I don't really have so many like tea stuff, but I do have like mugs. Mm-hmm. It's just something that I love to do. Ever since I got connected with coffee and stuff, it's just been one of those things. Well, it was a little expensive, and so I passed it up in the moment, but I thought we're probably going to be back here and I may pick it up then. Because I, I had other things I was going to buy as well. Mm-hmm. And I knew I was going to spend a, lot of, a little bit of money, so I was like, it's a little bit pricey. I don't want to get it right now. I'll hold off. It was this mug, or, or I guess, guess teacup is what I should say. It was, uh, it was a teacup, and it was this beautiful shade of blue, and it had this like, um, like this like gold trim on it and stuff. And it was a, it was like, a, it was a beautiful looking, like a little bit bigger size teacup. And I really loved the look of it. Well, the thing that was uh, super exciting about it was the fact that it was a teacup commemorating the queen's platinum Jubilee, okay. which was like her, um, it was a, um, the, like her, uh, celebrating 70 years of, of being the monarch of, mm-hmm. uh, as, as like the queen of England. And, um, <laughs> I, it was, it was, I, th- I want to say that it was, um, like f- it was like 60 bucks, I think. So it was a little pricey, mm-hmm. but look how beautiful this. Oh, wow. It was, uh, mm-hmm. it was, it was, it was a beautiful mug. I loved it. And it had this gold filigree and it was this beautiful shade of blue and it has like the queen's like silhouette on it. And it says it right there, 1962 to 2022. Mm-hmm. And it says celebration of the Platinum Jubilee. And that happened, I want to say, a few months ago, actually. And I, I watched it on. Uh, I think that's 52. 52 to 22, isn't it? Or I yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, 52. Yeah, 52. Mm-hmm. You're right. Sorry, 52. It looked like a six. Mm-hmm. But it's got like a. I think you should have like got it. I well, I, I think you should have got the it. The thing was, uh, the thing was, they had the better part of like twenty to twenty five on this like rack. Because I bet you're gone now. Well, well, hold on. I'm that's we haven't gotten to the good part of the story. So we went to Epcot on like the Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Saw this mug, had passed it up because I was going to spend money on other things that day, and we spent a bunch of money at Epcot. May I say, Wednesday rolls around. And we're in Hollywood Studios doing our normal schedule thing, making the lightsaber, and we get the word that the queen has passed. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, shit. Mm-hmm. This is the opportunity to get a collectible. Right. This is the, like, I should have gotten it. And, of course, we were like, okay, well, on Friday, we're going to have, like, a park hopping day, so we're going to have the ability to go, at least I think it was Wednesday, maybe Thursday. I, I'm getting my like days. That. I got you. Right. So I was like, we're going to have a day. We're going to be able to park, hop around. We can get to Epcot again and we'll run there really fast and pick it up. Buddy, whenever I got there, they were cleaned out. Mm-hmm. All like 25 of them were bought up and I was so sad because I was like, how cool would it have been for me at least to have gotten this wonderful yes. teacup that has this moment of history on it, but at the same time, I got it while I was at Disney when it all happened. Yes. I was like, that would have been a story moment for me, and I would have loved it, because I also collect m- mugs and teacups and stuff, and I was so sad I didn't get it. I was like, oh, that's the one that got away, is what it mm-hmm. felt like. So, Wow. But that's the little story I have for that. But it is, it like a, like we have both said, it's a, it's a very sad moment, but it's uh, it's interesting all the same to see how... 
Well, there's a lot of interesting yeah, stuff going in in the world right now. Um, I'm glad to be back with you, back in the saddle here. Yes. Um, this it. You know, I miss this. Yes. I'm glad to be back into it. Um, anything else you want to talk about? I don't think so. I just I'm look- really happy for you. Thank you. Um, your smile is contagious. As happy as you right. are. Right. <laughs> um, I'm excited. It's, it's, it's a great. It's a great season. It really does feel like a new, like a, um, a new chapter of sorts. Nothing feels inherently different, especially in Mallory and I's relationship. We've mm-hmm. always been very confident that this was the way it was going to be. We're going to get sure. married. So we never had any doubt about that. So nothing feels different in that regard. It just feels like there's a ring involved now, a little more expensive, if anything else. Sure. Um, it's a uh, little more official. It's a little more official, you know, uh, but uh, you two guys are absolutely brilliant together. And so this is good. This is a good thing. And I'm glad I get to sit back with you and watch how this happens and the journey that y'all are taking together. Right. So this is cool. It is cool. It is awesome. And like I was saying, it, it, uh, it really just feels like this is like the next step in the journey. Like it is her and I want to go on more vacations and stuff and, plan trips and we have ideas for well we need we need to call the x-man yes and all six of us go on a cruise Remember, yeah we were oh, supposed man. to go on a cruise and that you yeah know, what happened with that i don't know we need to get his butt back over yes, here we and, do. and nail him down to when we're going to do this yes <laughs> x-man <laughs> yeah if you're listening out there mm-hmm. well all right <laughs> if you're looking to to find us, you can find us on Facebook forward slash retrospect pod and you can uh, message us and hit us up that way or you can just type in retrospect on all the major podcasting platforms and you'll be able to find us. But anyways, thank you so much for listening and until next time, bye-bye. Peace. Peace.